Hi there, my name is Chris Rathbone and I'm a freelance illustrator. I work predominantly in the sports and automotive sectors and I've created work for a range of clients including Formula One, the NBA, Puma, Red Bull and Top Gear. I use Affinity Designer predominantly on both the iPad and the desktop versions and today I'm going to be giving you a tutorial for how I created a piece of work for one of my clients, Car Magazine. The focus and emphasis of the video will be showing you how to create an illustration from scratch and show you how to bring a sense of speed and energy and motion into your work. So I hope you enjoy. So before we get started, I thought you'd give you a quick glimpse into my studio setup because I know quite often there's a lot of questions regarding that kind of thing. As you can see, I'm Mac based with MacBook Pro and I have an external monitor set up here as well. I have a Wacom Cintiq Pro and for those of you who aren't sure what that is, it's basically a graphics monitor which enables you to draw directly onto using this pen. It really is my go-to tool for most of my work because I like the freedom and flexibility of being able to sketch and draw freehand as well as use the tools that Affinity Designer has to offer. Whenever I'm out working for clients or if I'm traveling around or if I just want to take a break from working in the studio, I have the iPad Pro and Apple Pencil. The great thing with that is Affinity Designer is obviously available on both the desktop and mobile devices. So it enables you to jump freely between the two and work on your files whenever and wherever you like, which is super handy. For the purpose of this video, I'm going to be based purely in the studio, so I'll be working on the Wacom. And I'll talk you through the tools as I'm using them as we go through the video. Now here we have our artboard, which I've set up to the dimensions required for our artwork. And over here, I've set up our first layer, which is a grid layer. As we go through the illustration, you'll see it's extremely important to be adding new layers at various points just to keep on top of your artwork and keep it clean and tidy to make your life easier. This grid layer is going to be a very basic rough layer and we're going to use this to form the skeleton for our illustration. Now, the first thing we want to do is create what's called a horizon line. So using the pen tool, just very simply create a horizontal line across your artwork. Now, this is the horizon line where basically all of our lines will disappear off to. What we want to do now is create what's called a vanishing point. So if you draw a line across your horizon line, this point here where the lines intersect where my cursor is, is basically going to form your vanishing point. Now what we want to do, there's no particular place for where we do these, but just create a series of lines coming in from your artwork, hitting that vanishing point, and then disappearing back out. You can add as many of these as you want, and like I said, there's no particular place where they have to be, it's not an exact science, but the more of these lines you create, the easier it will be to form your illustration based off of this vanishing point. Now we have our grid and our vanishing point and all of our lines disappearing off to this single point down here and it just gives us an idea of perspective already in our illustration and we're going to use this to start fleshing our illustration out. We've got our vanishing point grid set up what I'm going to do now is select all of the lines and group them. Now the shortcut for doing that on the Mac is Command G and what that enables us to do is now they are all grouped we can bring the opacity down on those to around 25%. This doesn't need to be exact um, but you just want to bring them down enough so that you can still see them and they're still fairly prominent and you can use them as a guide but it just enables us to draw over and differentiate our drawing lines with the grid lines we set up. Another thing I like to do is now we've got our grid set up for them to make this a more dynamic composition, it's just to rotate this ever so slightly off center. Now, what this does is it just means that our horizon line now is on a very slight angle. And what that's gonna do is make the composition and the illustration just that little bit more exciting to look at and it will give it more of a sense of speed as there's a bit of distortion in it. Now that we have our grid set up, what I'm gonna do is just form some very basic shapes which will be position work for where our cars will go. So what I'm going to do is just create some very basic rectangles which disappear off to our vanishing point using it as a guide. So what you can see now is we have a rectangle here disappearing off to our vanishing point. I'm going to create another one for the roof. And what this does, you can almost imagine this as a car. Here's your front of the car. Here's the windscreen, and these are our trailing lines off to our vanishing point. Now we can connect those two lines up, which is basically going to be roughly where our bonnet is. All of that's been done with the pen tool. Now I'm going to create the wheels using the ellipse tool. 
And what we can do is basically just create these shapes using the tool. Here's one for our front wheel, duplicate it for our back wheel, and our back wheel is going to be smaller because it's further away, but you'll notice that it still follows these vanishing points. So if I was to draw lines going back to our vanishing points here, you can see that our wheels basically fall along those vanishing points and we can delete those out afterwards. So there we have a very basic, very crude looking car, but you can kind of see how we are using our grid to create the perspective to start putting our car into it. Now, just for speed, I've gone through and I've created a second car over here on the right hand side using the exact same principles and process as we did for the first car. Um, and what this has done is it just gives us a more interesting composition. So we've got these two cars almost racing each other. You'll see the car on the right hand side is a little bit smaller and further back. So it gives the impression it's just slightly further behind our primary car on the left hand side. Now what we can do is we are finished with this layer now. So we can lock this layer down just to make sure that we don't interact with it in any way or accidentally move any pieces that we don't need. And I've created a new layer above this one um, called Sketch. And this is going to be where we take our cars and just flesh them out in a little bit more detail. So again, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to decrease the opacity down just a little bit on our grid layer, just again so that we can see it, but so that it's not too prominent. And now I'm going to be working into our Sketch layer. So what I'm going to do is, as we can see, we've got these rectangle box cars um, which are not very realistic at all so what we're going to do is just very basically start just using the pen tool or you can use your tablet if you have one to do this by hand and just start creating some softer shapes around these boxes they're just a bit more realistic or more representative of how a car would look and we can come in here and go around the wheel arches Still sort of following the guides that we've created earlier, but just giving it a bit more of a softer, more realistic feel. And what we could have here is obviously where our bonnet is going to come in here, and then it's going to come up to the side. Great, just really rough construction lines around our illustration to create it in a bit more of a realistic way. So I've basically been going around just adding detail onto our cars following the same process that we have been doing previously um, just to bring them to a stage which I'm happy with them. So here we can see, I mean, it's still very rough. Um, it's very loose line work at this stage, but you can see how the cars are starting to take shape um, and how we started to build these up using our baseline grid that we had previously created. So the next thing we're going to do, the same as we've done for the other layers, is we're going to group these together. Um, and then bring the opacity down to around sort of 25, 30%. Again, it doesn't have to be an exact amount, but just so that we can see them, they're there, we can use them as a guide for the next stage, um, but they're not too prominent, so our line work stays over the top. So we're gonna create a new layer on top of these, so we can lock our sketch layer, because we no longer need that. I created a new layer above the previous two layers called line work. Now this layer is going to be where we start to really add in the defining detail to the cars and ultimately create what will become our line work for the cars. Now at this stage, um, the cars are fairly rough. When you're adding in detail, if you're looking to create a specific car, so if it's a specific model and these cars need to be accurate, then of course you want to be looking at reference photos to be making sure you get the shapes of the lights, or the shapes of the grills, or where the wing mirrors sit, etc, etc, just to make sure that the cars are accurate and as true to life as they possibly can be. Um, however, obviously that's not always essential. Um, you might want the cars to be a bit more abstract, or you might want the cars to not be a specific model or brand of car, um, in which case you can just draw freehand. Um, so what we're going to be doing now is I'm going to be taking our lines 
and just drawing much cleaner straighter lines and just putting a bit more care into these lines. Again, I'm using the pen tool and the great thing with this is as you click and hold, you can start to move these lines and really shape them how you want them to be to get them as accurate as you possibly can. Again, at this stage, I'm just using my previous lines that I've created as real sort of rough work. But the thing to note here is when you come into intersecting parts, for example, here where I come down the back of the car and I'm approaching a wing mirror, I now want to stop my line because at this stage we're creating actual outlined artwork. We don't want to be creating, obviously, up to this point, everything's been quite rough and sketchy and lines have overlapped. Um, right now we're focusing in on much more detail. So when I get around to this wing mirror, for example, I now want to bring my line in and I'm going to make sure that it butts up to the edge of where these lines were. So it creates like a solid defined artwork. So again, for the essence of time, I'm going to jump ahead and do this, uh, speed it up so that you can see what I'm doing and then um, we'll come back to it when it's complete. So we've got all of our lines drawn now. Um, I'm happy with how they're looking. I think the cars are coming along nicely. We've got a good level of detail in there. Um, you don't need to go too crazy with it um, because you get a lot more of the detail come through the shading and colouring, which we'll see in the later stages. Um, but for now, I wanted to run through a couple of really cool features in Affinity Design, which I like, which are nice little touches to your illustrations. So what we're going to do now is we're going to select all of our line work, um, Command A to select all. Now. Up to this point, we've been using the pen tool, and what you'll see is we've got the same thickness to the line here. All the lines are exactly the same. There's no real variation to it. Um, I like giving it um, some variation to the line work, which makes it feel more natural and almost hand-drawn. Now, you can have a play around. There's By default, there's loads of brushes and brush presets that are all built into Affinity Designer, which are really cool. Um, I personally don't use them very often. Um, what I like to play around with is the stroke tool. Now, it's quite a simple feature, but if you select all of your lines and then come over to the pressure bar over here, now what you can do is this bar here by default is, is a constant all the way across. And what you'll see is if you start to drag points around on here, so if I drag this one, for example, this is the middle of the line. So basically what this is doing is means that my, last, my line starts off quite wide and then becomes finer in the middle and then goes quite wide again. If you drag the edges here, and what you see, if I come all the way down to the extreme, you'll see it really feathers those lines out. So it's almost as if they, they taper away from nothing to become full thickness in the middle and then taper back out. It's a really cool effect. Now for me personally, I don't want to go this far because I think that's it's just a bit too extreme for the style that I'm looking for. But if we bring these up to around the 50% mark, around the middle, and what that's done is it's just given a nice sort of tapering to these lines. So this line here, you can see it really well where we've got this full line. It just starts off thin, gets a bit thicker in the middle and goes thin again. And it's just a much more natural 
brushstroke, in my opinion. I think it complements the style quite well. Now, the next feature that I wanted to go through in Affinity Designer um, is a really cool tool, um, and this will come into play a lot later in the illustration as well. Um, but it's important to set this up as early as possible. I'm going to select all of our lines here. Um, so we've obviously just gone through and done our brushes over here, but the next thing we're going to do is assign some colors to these. Now, very simply, what you can do is you can click up here, um, which will create these as a new swatch. You can see it's added a swatch to my palette here. I don't actually want to do that though. Well, what I want to do is I want to come up here to add global color. And we're going to create this as a global color. Now, what we do, I'll click on here and I'll show you up here, you'll see the difference between a regular swatch, which comes up here in your recent swatches, and a global swatch here. The global swatch has this little white triangle on the corner, if you can see it. And what that means is it means that that swatch is a global swatch. So I'm now going to click it to make sure that all my line work has become that swatch color. Now the cool thing with global swatches is if we now double click this, it brings up the sliders to change the color, which is cool. We've all seen those before. But what we can do now is because it's a global swatch, this is effectively a live color. So how we affect this now, it changes the color of everything that is selected by that global swatch. You can do this for fills, you can do this for strokes, and it will apply it to everything. So it's easy, it's important to set this up at the early stage because if you get further on down the illustration when you've got lots of fills and lots of shapes and lots of line work, it's a bit of a pain to try and select all of those things individually and then change colors. Whereas if you set these global swatches up very early, um, it gives you so much freedom to so easily just open up and change and amend the colors up here. Um, so I'm just gonna control Z back through to these to get this back to the swatch that I wanted. Um, but I think global swatches is a really important thing. So I think if you haven't had much experience with those, then definitely have a play around with them. So we've got our strokes all looking good now. I'm, I'm pretty happy with those. Um, one thing that we're going to do, which I think again is a really nice um, sort of small touch to, to add to the illustration, is I'm going to select some of these strokes, not too many of them, but basically strokes that form the outside of any particular object. So as you can see here, I'm going around the outside of the car, um, the sort of the defining outside edge to the grill, um, maybe to the lights, to the roof and sort of around here as I come across to this car, again picking out the roof the side profile lines, the bonnet, the mirrors. Um, again, just a few, few details. You don't have to go too heavy with these. Now, all of the stroke widths have all been exactly the same up to this point, as we can see over here. What I'm now gonna do is I'm gonna increase the, the width of some of these, so maybe to around 1.2, so that's about sort of 50% thicker than the other strokes were. And what this has done, you can see, is it's it's added a really nice finishing touch, almost giving a bit of um, weighted line to the illustration. So the lines around the outside now feel more prominent and it puts a bit more prominence on some of these lines. Um, so I'm just gonna go in and, and select a few more because um, I think that's looking pretty cool. So I'm gonna go in and select a few more lines. Again, you don't wanna go too over the top with this. You don't necessarily need to, um, but I think just by adding a few um, defining edge lines, it really helps to make the illustration pop. So up to this point, everything we've been doing has really just been using the, the stroke. We haven't dealt with any fills or blocks of color yet. So I'm pretty much there with my line work now. Um, I think we can't really do too much else to it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and lock this layer and I'm gonna add in a new layer above it and I'm gonna call this one inking. Now basically the inking layer is gonna be where we're going to start to fill some of these areas, which will be the real sort of heavy shadow areas with a solid fill color, the same color as our stroke. So for example, in here in the grill, I'm gonna make these fills instead of strokes. So what this does is our inking layer is basically adding the first level of shading and blocks of color to our illustration, just to give it a bit more depth as you'll see here. So again, make sure we're selecting our global colors, and setting it to a fill, so that in the same way earlier on when we changed our global colors, you can see it affects the fills and the strokes, which will be important for later stages. So you can see that I'm starting to add the shading in here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna speed up the video and continue adding it in and come back to you when I'm done.
Now the next stage of the illustration, I'm pretty much happy with my line work and with my inking. You can see that I've started to blotch in quite a few of these areas around the grills and especially around the wheels and tires, the real sort of dark areas of the car where there'd be pretty much hardly any light hitting at all or the actual shadow cast from the car itself. Um, so what we're gonna do now is, I'm gonna set a new layer in now. It's important that this layer goes below the inking layers uh, and we're gonna call this color. And the reason this needs to go behind the inking layers is as you'll see, we'll start to add some block color to this. Um, now having it underneath the inking layers means that any color that we add will be below it. So you'll still be able to see your illustration line work and inking lines come through on the drawing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new global color up here. Now for this one, I'm just gonna go to around a sort of 50% gray. Um, the reason being, I don't like to start introducing color until later on in the illustration, because I find that you can get yourself quite bogged down um, with playing with colors that try and complement each other and trying to find colors that are working for your illustration. Um, whereas if you just stick to shades of gray um, early on, just until you've got the levels right and the shading and the lighting and everything right that you want, you can then start playing around with color. Now, what I'm doing is I'm just going around the shape of this car. And again, you can be quite rough because you're below the inking layer. None of this is going to appear above the inking. So, for example, if I come around here, now I'm going to make sure that I select our lighter gray, set it to a fill rather than a stroke. Now, obviously I haven't gone all the way around the car, but if this layer was above the line work, what you see is it completely masks out the car, which we don't want. So by having it behind, it means that you now get your line work coming through whilst having the block color in behind the car. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna to continue to do this. I'm gonna jump ahead in the video because um, it's quite a self-explanatory process. Um, I'll come back to you when I've added the uh, blocks of color. Coloring is all complete now. Um, and what I've done is I've added in just a few very basic lines as well, um, which you see along here, all going off to our, if we turn our grid layer back on from earlier, disappearing off to our focal point. Um, so it's just starting to give a bit of context and a, a bit of an environment now to where these cars are sat. So again, it's all just done using the, my um, global color that I've got up here just for flat color. Um, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and lock that layer. I'm now gonna set another layer in above the color layer, but still working below the inking layer. Now this layer is gonna be called shadows. And this is gonna perform the darker areas to the cars. Now. What I want to do is select a new global color, um, but I'm going to make it just a bit darker than the gray that we previously had, but not quite as dark as my inking lines. So maybe around here. And again, we can tweak it after because that's one of the beauties of these global colors. Now with the shadows, um, there's no real sort of placement to these. It's really up to you. If I mean, if you're working from reference photos, great, but it's really up to you as to how extreme and dramatic you want to go with, with these shadows. So. What I like to do is imagine where your light source is coming from. So for me, it's coming from up here. There's a light obviously up in the sky, the sun, um, which is casting a light down on these cars. So anything that would be cast in a shadow is what we're gonna be now drawing. So if you imagine for a very good example of this is where the wing mirror is. So where the wing mirror is coming down underneath this car here, it would be cast in a shadow. So what we can do is start to draw the shadow in on the underside of this mirror and almost imagine where that shadow would be going. So once we set that to our fill, we can now see that it's starting to create a very realistic looking shadow. Now you can pick a few other areas around the car to do this. I'm gonna jump ahead in the video, obviously because it's quite a time consuming part um, and I'll come back to you when we're done. Now, I've got all my shadows and shaded areas um, where I want them. I've been playing around with it for a little while just to make sure I had them right and it was 
looking nice and balanced. I'm uh, pretty happy with it. And what I've also done is I've added in some more flashes um, along the same grid that we were using earlier, just so we've got a bit of variation in those. So we've got our really dark area flashes here, which is from our inking color, then our medium grays, and then our lighter grays here as well. And again, when we play around with the global colors at the end of the illustration, this is when this will all start coming to life. So what we're gonna do now in exactly the same process as we did for the shadows, we're gonna create a new layer above our color layer. Um, we're going to call this highlights and what we're going to do is create a new global swatch that is a lighter gray than the bodywork but not full white so what we're going to do now is using the same process if you imagine where your light source is coming from where these areas will be caught by those highlights so for example they're going to be in the opposite places to where the shadows were so you can almost use your shadows as the negatives for where your highlights are going to be. So for example, if I pick up this area here where the light's going to hit the edge of this car and bounce off, in the same way that our shadow was cast on the underside of this mirror, there's going to be highlights on the top of this mirror, so we can create some in here. And just go around the car and pick out the details that you think the light would hit, bearing in mind that our light is coming from the top. So once again, I'm just gonna go ahead and speed up this video and come back to you when the highlights are done. my shadows and highlights now. I'm really happy with how it's looking. I think we've got some nice depth on the car there from the, from the highlighted area here all the way through to the darker shade in here. Um, so what I've done is I've added on just a flat color for the background for the sky and also added in a circle up here which is ultimately going to be our light source which is the sun. Um, obviously all of our shadows around the front of the car um, which suggests that the light source is kind of behind and above. So obviously with the sun being behind the cars and, and up in the sky um, it, it complements the, the positioning of our lighting. So I'm going to add some finishing touches onto this, but before I do, I just wanted to play around with the global colours. Um, so we touched on those earlier, but this really will show you how we can bring the illustration to life very easily and play around with these colours. So the first one I'm going to start looking at is the, the darkest colour which we've got here, which has formed our shadows and our inking outlines. Now, to be honest, I think I'm pretty happy with where it is. I mean, it obviously needs to be the darkest colour in the illustration, it's, it's pretty dark where it is. It's like a nice dark blue. Um, I don't really like using black too much in my work, so I find it's quite heavy. And also if your work is going in magazines, quite often a, a really heavy black can cause a lot of issues with the amount of ink that goes down on the page. So um, I've gone here with like a, a, a dark blue, which I think works well. So because I've got that blue tint in the illustration, I'm gonna try and carry that through to the cars themselves. So I'm gonna work my way down from the colors from the darkest to the lightest. So the next color I'm gonna look at, this is basically our color that we've been using for our shadows on the car. Um, so I'm gonna take the, the black out for stars and I'm gonna pump some blue in there because obviously we've got that blue coming through from our um, inking layers. And I'm gonna basically give it like a, a kind of a tearly turquoisey color, um, which I think would be really nice. And you can already see in the areas here where it's contrasting with the dark inking blue. I think that's working well. Obviously we can go back to these and tweak these. Um, but just get ballparks of where you want the colors to be to start with, uh, and then you can kind of work backwards from there. So the next one down again, I'm gonna bring in a little bit of blue in here just to, to follow that theme through, um, and add in a little bit of yellow just to give it a nice turquoisey feel. Again, I think that's working well. And for my final color for the highlights, I wanna go for a really contrasted image here. Um, so I'm basically gonna bring that down to be pretty much white. Um, in fact, it is white. Um, and I think that's given us a nice balance here from this dark blue for the shadows on our car through to the, the mid blue for the actual base color of the car and then through to white for the highlights here. Now, having the white sun in the background as well really gives the impression that those highlights are bouncing off from the sun up here. Um, and I think this is working really well. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick out just a couple of these flashes 
Um, nothing too much. I'm going to add some more in, in a little while. Um, but basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new global color up here. And I want to put in here a kind of a soft pink, which will really help to complement the, the baby blue and turquoise colors that we've got going through here. So I'm going to set up my global color and add those in. And already you can see that that's starting to, to add just a little bit of lift to the illustration. Now I'm going to add in um, what is going to be my final layer up here. So I'm going to go to the very top layer, which I've got, which is line work and add in a layer above. Now, everything we've been doing up to this point has been adding in layers below the line work because we obviously want our line work to sit on top of everything else. Um, but with this, I'm just gonna add in some very subtle details into this um, above the inking layer, just to add some, some more sense of speed and uh, energy to the illustration. Now, I want these to sit above the actual inking layer, as I said. So what we're gonna do is following our same grid that we set up earlier on going off to the same vanishing point I'm just going to put in a few of these flashes now the colors of these will be dependent on what is around because I don't want it to fall into the background of the car but what I'm going to do is I don't want these to go all the way through the illustration because it can make it look quite messy so what I'm going to do is I've got my vanishing point here but I'm going to use the node tool and just select that node and just follow it up this way a little bit. So it's still following that same perspective. It's still going off to the same vanishing point, um, but it's not going through the whole illustration. So this is quite a nice detail to add, just add a bit of motion to the final stages of the illustration. And you can bring these in at any colors which you like. So I'm gonna bring some in here, maybe bring that pink back through as well, because I think that's quite a nice accent color. So if we bring this in, and again, just make them short. And the thing to remember with this, um, use your no tool to adjust these how you want them. Um, if they're in front of the car here, you don't want them being too long because they wouldn't be going through the car. They're almost leading up to the car, if that makes sense. So you don't want them going through the car um, too much. So try and keep them relatively short in the foreground and definitely not going past the car. So again, I might get another pink one in there. Um, and I might get a couple in this top corner up here. Now, this top left corner, uh, sorry, top right corner is already looking a bit empty, but that's been intentionally done so because I'm going to add some other details in there in a second, which you'll see it's just for the finishing touches for this illustration. So what I'm going to do is just add in a couple more flashes up here. Now, I think that's pretty much it with the, the motion lines because I don't want to get too busy with it. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back down to my color layer and I'm gonna draw in some really abstract um, and very simple clouds in this top corner up here, just again to add a bit of depth and um, a bit of variation to the illustration. And this is obviously gonna go in behind the car, but what you'll see is these are going off to the vanishing point as well. So everything goes off to that vanishing point that we created on our grid in the very early stages. So what you can see is we've got some nice clouds in there. Just gonna create some coming in from this side up here as well. And again, I'm just using the pen tool it's nice to be almost inaccurate um, on purpose here so that it doesn't look too regimented and too, too orchestrated. Um, so just use your pen tool, create some shapes, see what works, a bit of playing around, trial and error to see how it works. And already there, I think we've got some nice depth added in. Now, just for the final, final touches onto this, I don't want these clouds to be flat, so I wanna add in some accent colors in here, just some highlights. So again, I'm just gonna create some, shout, some shapes which follow the same kind of flow as the clouds that we created. You can use some of the darker colors that we created earlier on, or some of the, the mid blues up here, um, just to add a bit of depth into the clouds. And what we wanna do is you wanna make sure any that are bigger than the cars that come in front, we just send them to the back because we don't want them to sit in front of our car, obviously, because these clouds are behind. So you can do that by using your um, tools up here to send behind or in front, or if you know the shortcuts for them, which on the Mac is shift command and then use the bracket key to push them in front and behind. So I'm just gonna go through and add a few details into these clouds up here. And then I think we are pretty much done. And I think that's it. Now I'm really happy with this illustration now, how it's come out. I might carry on just adding a few more details into these clouds. Um, but I think we're pretty much finished. So uh, I'm gonna wrap up the video here in terms of the tutorial side of it. 
um, and then jump ahead to the final illustration. And I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope you like my work.